Hello and welcome to a new full load. Today we're building an analog DC electronic load. We're going to be using this module that you can get on eBay with this uh, panel meter that can measure volts, amps and power, uh, some uh, connectors, a switch, an assortment of uh, standoffs and uh, screws. I'm going to be using the salvage heatsink with a 12, 12 volt uh, cooling fan to ensure the MOSFET stays uh, nice and cool. So let's get started working on this uh, project. The first thing I'm going to do is the mechanical work. I need to drill a bunch of holes and uh, slots for the front and back panel as well as internal holes for uh, just anchoring the heatsink and the PCB module inside the enclosure. And for that I have prepared this uh, drawing. Uh, I've used Eagle CAD, the um, PCB layout module to draw these uh, outlines with uh, all the holes that I need uh, drilled. So I'm going to be using this template to mark the holes on these uh, panels and on the heatsink. And next I'm going to drill and cut the required slots. Because this enclosure has these uh, slots on the uh, left and uh, right side, I'm thinking to arrange things inside like this. Have the heatsink sit like this with the uh, cooling fan like this and the PCB module in here. This way the cooling fa fan will pull air from the vents on the right side. The air will be pushed through the uh, fins of the heatsink and out on the left side through these uh, slots. So I think this will give me adequate cooling uh, without making additional uh, uh, big holes and slots in this uh, enclosure. I started by punch marking all the required holes and slots onto the panels. Next I started drilling the 3mm holes into the bottom of the enclosure. I continued with uh, drilling 2.5mm holes into the heatsink. These will be tapped later with an M3 thread and some standoffs will be mounted. This eBay tap that I'm using is not very good. I think I've used it to tap like 10 or 15 holes in total, all in aluminum, and I can see it has already worn out. So I need to get a higher quality one. Next, I drilled the required pilot holes into the front and back panel. I started with a 2.5 mm drill and then enlarged them to their final size with an 8 mm drill. I then continued with cutting the required slots using the Dremel tool and a cutting disc. This is how the uh, panels look like after drilling and cutting with the Dremel tool. And I actually think I'm getting better with the Dremel because I made uh, quite a nice cut in here, very uh, almost, almost straight lines. Uh, either that or these uh, steel sheets are easier to be cut with the Dremel than the uh, aluminum sheets that uh, I worked on before. Anyway, I think I did a good job, so I checked everything fits now. Before assembling everything inside the enclosure, I uh, installed these uh, standoffs on the heatsink using the holes I uh, tapped earlier and uh, some thread lock. Unfortunately I applied too much force on this one right here and it snapped. So be careful if you're using these uh, brass standoffs don't apply too much force or the same thing might happen to you. Uh, I think these three points will be enough for uh, keeping these uh, this heatsink secure inside the enclosure. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, desolder the MOSFET transistor from the PCB because I will have uh, this transistor installed on the heatsink and I'll run wires from the transistor to the PCB. So I'm going to use my uh, uh, solder pump and probably some solder braid to remove this. For wiring the MOSFET transistor I am going to use 18 AWG silicon wire. I would have liked to use uh, 16 AWG but I don't have that size available uh, right now so this will have to do. To make things easier to connect I have decided to use these uh, pluggable screw terminals for connecting the MOSFET to the actual PCB. I only have the, these 4-pin uh, uh, ones but uh, there is enough space for mounting these on the PCB and uh, this will help me for easily connecting and disconnecting the MOSFET from the PCB. 
in case I want to exchange the MOSFET, for example, in case of uh, it gets damaged, or if I want to disassemble this thing, I can easily disconnect this board from the transistor, which will be permanently attached to the heatsink. Before attaching the transistor to the heatsink, I'm going to clean the surfaces with some IPA, and then I'm going to apply some uh, thermal paste just to ensure very good thermal conductivity. So I have everything nice and tight. The, uh, we can see the thermal paste squeezed out the uh, edges of the uh, transistor, but that's fine. That's going to ensure really good thermal um, coupling between the package of the transistor and the actual heatsink. For turning on or off the cooling fan, I'm going to use one of these uh, bimetallic switches. This one is rated for 45 degrees Celsius and it's a um, normally opened type. Uh, that means the switch will stay open until the uh, temperature is reached. When the temperature is reached, the switch will close and uh, thus turning on the fan. Uh, this is, uh, as you can see, a metallic one. And you need to be careful because the majority of these uh, metallic uh, switches uh, do conduct between the actual switch and the uh, metal housing. But this one I have checked with the multimeter and there is uh, no continuity between this metal jacket and the switch contacts. But that's something you need to be aware of and you'd better, uh, you would be better off by ordering those uh, ceramic types because those have an insulating uh, ceramic jacket. So they're just easier to use. This will need to sit uh, really close to the uh, transistor. Maybe I'll mount it uh, right here at the top of the transistor and uh, I will use some uh, thermal uh, adhesive, thermal silicon uh, plaster to secure this uh, switch to the heatsink. It's not very liquid and this is a sign it's getting old and it will harden itself. Okay, let's see if we can work with the stuff. With a bit of force, I managed to stick this thing down and I will leave it uh, for uh, maybe 15 minutes to harden. For attaching the cooling fan to the heatsink, this was the easiest method I could think of. Um, brass standoffs that will go between the fins of the heatsink and I'll add some two-part epoxy just to uh, secure them in place. And some uh, smaller um, standoffs on the bottom side just to keep the same uh, distance from the heatsink. Uh, depending on what type of heatsink you choose or how you arrange the heatsink inside your enclosure, you might have to opt for a different uh, mounting option, but I thought this is uh, quite okay for my scenario. When using these uh, ready-made JST connectors, it's critical to check the polarity. For example, in my case, the polarity is wrong. So I plan to use this uh, JST connector for uh, supplying power to the PCB module. And uh, as we can see, the negative goes on the plus side marked on the PCB. So I need to reverse these two. Before we can use this panel meter, we need to do a couple of changes. Uh, initially, it's designed to measure the uh, voltage supplied at the DC in uh, port, but we don't want that. We want to supply 12 volts for to power the meter and we want the meter to measure another voltage, which is the one present at the load terminals. So in order to do that, we're going to need to uh, modify something inside the meter and that can be uh, done very easily. We need to remove this plastic cover. Next we have these uh, four screws to remove. The first step would be to separate these two connections, the uh, DC in plus and the load plus. They are connected uh, with a PCB track between these points, so you need to uh, run a knife between these uh, two pads and separate them. The next step is to add the sense wire for the voltage and we need to start by cutting this trace right here that goes to R10. Uh, we need to cut that trace because it's connected to this terminal 
and after cutting that trace we need to solder a wire on this pad uh, on R10 and that will be our voltage sense wire that will be connecting to the uh, front panel uh, load plus terminal. This is how the connection looks like and I will add a blob of um, hot glue just to secure the wire in place. I continued by assembling the front and back panel. On the back panel I had to install the rocker switch and the DC input jack as well as wire the switch in series with the positive line. On the front panel I had to install the panel meter, the uh, two 4mm banana jacks and for these you need to make sure they don't touch the metal part. In this case they have a nice insulating jacket that goes through the hole and also prevents the jack from spinning on the panel. We also have the 10 turn pot on the panel. It was quite easy to install but a standard 6mm knob doesn't fit over the shaft because the shaft is 6.3mm. So I had to grind the brass insert on the inside of the knob with the Dremel and enlarge it to 6.3mm. Before moving forward with the project and assembling everything inside the enclosure, I will explain the wiring. So DC power comes in through the, the back panel, through this uh, DC jack, goes through the switch and then it's uh, connected to this 2-pin uh, JST plug that will supply power to this header on the actual dummy load uh, PCB. On this 3-pin header I have connected the potentiometer and please be aware that these uh, 10 turn pots don't have the wiper on the uh, contact in the middle as you would find on other potentiometers. The wiper is actually on uh, this tab right here, the outer one. So make sure you solder the um, uh, second wire to this outer tab. The MOSFET transistor is connected to this uh, screw pluggable terminal that just plugs in into the board here. I will leave this disconnected for now. Next we have the cooling fan. The positive of the cooling fan goes through this thermal switch and then it's uh, brought together with the negative on this uh, 3 pin connector. Uh, I also have the power for the uh, panel meter on this 3 pin connector. So the positives are connected together on the middle pin while the outer pins are negatives. And this I will connect to this header right here which is normally the cooling fan header but it's just a header with positive and negative coming from the main power supply. So I'm going to use that header to supply power to the cooling fan and to the panel meter. Next right here we have the uh, negative input on the 4mm uh, banana jack that goes to uh, this terminal on the panel meter. Next the, the power comes out of this terminal and will connect on the V- uh, tab on the dummy load. And the uh, positive uh, banana plug from the uh, front panel connects to the V plus tab on the dummy load. You might notice we also have this uh, thin wire called VSense that connects to the positive terminal. This is the uh, uh, mod I did earlier on the panel meter so that it can measure the uh, voltage right at the uh, input of this uh, dummy load. If this wasn't clear enough, I will also post a wiring diagram in the description below in PDF format. Now to continue with the assembly, I will install these uh, standoffs that will hold the uh, dummy load PCB module inside the enclosure. For the heatsink, I ended up drilling multiple holes because they weren't aligning properly Partly because uh, the holes I tapped into the heatsink uh, were not perfectly perpendicular and uh, when I started installing the standoffs they, they do not sit perpendicular to the surface of the heatsink and so the holes uh, got a, a bit of different spacing. So the next step is to install the uh, dummy load module and one thing I didn't take into consideration is the fact that this connector will, will be blocking uh, some of the uh, air coming into the fan but I think it, it should be okay. So this is how the uh, 
PCB looks like after it's been mounted with these four screws. The last step is to connect everything, so I will start with the uh, DC power. Next I have the fan plus uh, power to the front panel that goes to J2. Next the potentiometer that goes to J4. Next we have uh, this MOSFET connector. Next, this red wire will go to V+. And this black wire will go to V-. Now, before adding the top cover, you might want to do a test just to make sure everything is working. It seems I have everything wired up correctly. The front panel uh, is working so I can uh, install the top cover. This is how the dummy load looks in the end. I have added these uh, labels as a final touch. They make the front and back panel a bit nicer and provide useful info at the same time. The load should be able to handle up to 100 volts but I decided to keep it on the safe side and selected 60 volts as the maximum input voltage and I have that labeled right under the uh, input jacks. I did some tests on the dummy load and it looks like it can handle 60 watts while keeping the MOSFET under 60 degrees Celsius. Depending on your setup, what size of heatsink and cooling fan you decide to use, you might be able to dissipate over 100 watts, but keep in mind that will probably shorten the life of the MOSFET considerably because it will operate outside its forward bias safe operating area. A solution to that would be to use multiple parallel MOSFETs. I would go with one MOSFET for each 50 or 60 watts. I've also checked the accuracy of the uh, voltage measured on the front panel meter with my Fluke 87 and uh, it seems to have a very small error, just uh, 60 millivolts, which is acceptable for this dummy load because I'm not going to use it to measure uh, precise voltages. My thermal switch is rated for 45 degrees Celsius, but it actually kicks in at about 55 degrees Celsius measured on the MOSFET. That is to be expected, these are not very precise and also there is a thermal resistance between the MOSFET package and the thermal switch. So the thermal switch will reach the uh, temperature a bit later than the MOSFET. There is no failsafe on this dummy load, but that could be implemented with a second thermal switch that will cut off one of the inputs if a certain temperature, let's say 90 degrees Celsius, is exceeded on the heatsink. The total cost of parts used in this dummy load was about $40, but you probably have some of the parts already and you don't need to purchase them. There is no real advantage to an analog DC load when compared to a digital one except for the fact that they are very simple and you can easily understand how they work, you can modify and possibly repair them if needed. There will be links in the description for all the parts used in this project so check them out. If you enjoyed watching this don't forget to like the video and I will see you next time.